Welcome back to the channel. I'm Baz and you're watching Venture Off Road Australia 4x4. With all the boat repairs and trailer repairs all done now, it's time to move on to four wheel drive repairs. So Big Whitey as we call her, the 80 series naturally aspirated diesel. Uh, it's got a bit of a clicking CV joint. It's been doing it for a little while and I figured uh, it's better just to sort this one out before it goes bang on the track. We're heading up the high country in a few weeks, so uh, we're going to drive some good tracks, I hope. And so let's get stuck in and get this CV sorted. First things first, I've got the car up on uh, jack stands. I'll show you that. Now we'll get the wheel off and start pulling apart this front end. It's the driver's side uh, front that we're looking at. I should say that I've never pulled apart a CV before. I actually, well, I've assisted in pulling apart the CV many years ago uh, out on the Barclay River Jeep track in the Vic High Country. Uh, when we had our old 60 series, we actually had two CVs go bang on us um, because of a faulty locker. Um, but at the time I had no idea what I was doing and I was just lucky enough that I had a mechanic with me that made that job of pulling it apart much quicker and easier than it would have been if I was on my own. Thanks to Schmitty if you're watching this. Got some good memories of the Barclay River Jeep track with you. 21 mil socket for the wheel studs on the 80 series Land Cruiser. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, remove this brake caliper. Two 17mm bolts holding the caliper on to start with. So I'm working outside. I've got a cardboard box that I'm sticking all my parts into. Flip that up. I'm just being careful not to overstretch that brake line. I'll just cable tie that to the spring there to keep that out of the way. I might put on a second one just to be sure in case one breaks. Next up, we'll remove the 10 mil bolts in the locking hub. So I need to make sure that the hub is in the freewheel position. Don't need to do anything with that actually sure what size bolts they are. They look like about a 13. There are 12. nuts and washers there and there'll be cone washers we'll be reusing all of those so just got to get those cone washers now can hit the ends of the studs using a brass punch. Okay. 
you can also hit the sides of the hub. And I just want to pop these comb washers One free. Just try the punch again. Just using vibration basically. That's free too. That's three free. Just got to keep working around. Got a circlip on the end of the axle in here. There we go. Circlip that's now all dirty because I've dropped it in the dirt, so I'll give that a clean off. Circlip's now cleaned off. That can go in my box, and then I think that will just come straight off then. Freewheeling hub. That's a 54 mil hub nut socket. I believe it suits all Land Cruisers. I'm forgetting that there's locking tabs there that I need to remove. Find the tabs that are pushed up and push them back down. hub nut hanging on to all of these bits it's the locking ring I should have another one of those in the kit that I've got there but just in case and then we've got another 54 mil nut hold the bearing in as we remove the rotor. I'll go find somewhere safe to put that. Next I need to remove these bolts. I can't recall what size they are. I'm gonna say about 17 just looking at that. Uh, that's the dust cover and uh, the brake backing plate I think it's called. How am I going with my terminology? I don't necessarily know what that's all called but uh, hopefully it makes sense. I know the swivel hub kit comes with a spare of that or a replacement. I don't think I've got one in the kit that I've got because I'm not doing the swivel hub. Need to give the spindle a bit of a tap to free it up. Obviously I don't want to hit it with a hammer so I'm going to, and I don't have a brass hammer so I'm going to use it with a timber. I think that's going to work just fine. There we go. Spindle is out. Just looking at that bush in there. And without cleaning it up, I think that is looking fine. Oh, also, there's a little bit of corrosion on that CV too. So that would indicate that we've gotten some moisture in there at some point. Now for the CV to come out, there's a flat area 
top and bottom and it has to be top and bottom and if it's not you need to rotate it so that it is it's just there and then that should fairly well slide out and that has come out relatively easily I would say didn't give me too much trouble my guess is that that's worn out more than anything just because of the age of the grease so I now need to remove the CV from the shaft because I am going to reuse that scoop out as much of this grease as I can my thinking with this was to replace it before it goes bang on the side of the track or on a track because I've done that once before and cleaning out the shrapnel wasn't much fun Brake cleaner on paper towel. Just keep wiping it out. And I want to spray the brake cleaner in there because I'm not going to uh, take the entire swivel housing apart. So I'm just going to wipe as much grease out as I can. Make sure it's nice and clean in there. Pretty happy with how that's cleaned up. Got a Terrain Tamer seal kit, front axle seal kit, FAS K2. So I'm just doing the one side, so I only need the uh, one kit. If I was doing both sides, I'd need two kits. Obviously, not sponsored by Terrain Tamer, I don't have enough subscribers for that, but I've always seen uh, their products as good quality gear. So I will happily use them. That'll be my inner axle seal. Looks right. I just want to make sure that I had the right part before I go pulling out the old one. I've got my Blue Pack is the brand uh, seal puller. That's the old seal there. I'm going to punch back in the new uh, axle seal with this uh, blue pack wheel bearing and seal driver toolkit. Don't ask me how much it costs, I don't recall. If I use the 50 mil. Make sure that that seal surface is nice and clean. Feels good. Can't feel any grittiness or nastiness there. New axle seal installed. All right, I'm improvising here. If I had a vise or a nice piece of metal pipe, the idea is that you drop it down into a metal pipe or into the vise and that will separate there. It's just a circlip that holds it in. I don't have a vise and I don't have a piece of metal pipe, I don't think. So 
here goes using a couple of bits of wood. So this is how I'd do it if I was in the bush, I guess. Easy. Easier than I was expecting, actually. Came out without any trouble at all. Didn't take much force. And uh, so now I can get stuck into cleaning up the axle because I'm reusing that and packing the new CV. Put it all back together, eh? Bit of a clean up along the way. Not too bad. Start with the spindle. Just removing all the excess grease first before I go in with the brake cleaner so it doesn't make a big soup. right inside the spindle as well just remove all of that old grease Next, the axle. You can do this in any order you like. The surface on the axle is a little bit marked. That's the seal surface there. It's not too bad, I think. Alright, that one's cleaned up, ready to use again. Happy with that. Freewheeling hub's really not looking too bad in terms of cleanliness. I'll just make sure there's no leftover gasket or gasket goo. It looks like someone's used gasket goo around this at some point. So I'll clean all that out. Just clean out the old grease from in there. That's looking good. Put that one aside too. Take off the old gasket, which looks like it's fairly well intact. That's the old gasket. And then I'll just clean up any muck. Alright. It's cleaned up, ready for some fresh grease. So I think that's everything clean and we're ready to re-grease and put it all back together. Time to put in the new CV. So we're doing a Terrain Tamer CV. Um, not sponsored by them. Just like the quality of their gear. Seems like a reputable, trustworthy brand. Now, they give me a couple of these uh, grease to pack in the CV. And then I've got another tub of grease going with the Penrite. Not for any particular reason other than I like Penrite. And we'll use the Penrite grease to pack the rest of the knuckle. But clean gloves for this part of the job. 
interesting that that's quite sort of dirty or something. I don't understand why that would be. We've got our new snap ring, which I'm not going to put in just yet. So we're going to pack that full of grease. Just force that grease in there, which seems to be working. I think Terry and Tamer have done some thinking on this. It's getting out around all of the balls, and it's filling that knuckle, or sorry, filling that CV really well. How good's that? So snap ring in there. And I saw a trick. So I saw if you put a cable tie around this snap ring, then that um, compresses it. And as you insert the axle into the CV, it just pushes the uh, cable tie out of the way. pull that apart. Shouldn't be able to pull it apart. Nope. All right, success. So aligning the flat on the top and the bottom. Careful not to damage that new oil seal as we go. Have to rock that down. There we go. Now I just need to pack the rest of that knuckle with the lithium grease. The workshop manual says to pack the knuckle three quarters full. So we'll go work on that. a little bit at a time This is smashing through this. Well, that is a full tub of grease. I think I'm happy with how much is in there. Use whatever's left on my hand to just lube that shaft. Let's clean up that gasket surface now. Happy with that for cleanliness. Now, chuck a couple of drill bits in there to just use as a guide. And my gasket, 
and that goes with that uh, little notch facing down. Just going to give this spindle another final wipe down. Happy with how that brass bush is looking there. It's not scored or damaged in any way. That notch again facing down. I've done a lot of searching as to whether there should be a gasket between that service air on the spindle and the back of the brake backing plate. Um, there's not one in the Toyota workshop manual and the consensus that I've seemed to find online is well, some people do it and some people don't. Um, I'm going to not because it's not in the Toyota workshop manual. Now that will go on there so that the cutout faces the back of the car and uh, that's where the brake caliper will sit. Again, cutout facing down. And then we've got our dust cover, which there's a little hole there, and that should be facing the top. Now that we've got all of those parts together, we can start putting the bolts back in. Gonna snug those all up. In a crisscross pattern. I'm not really tightening them, just just a little bit beyond finger tight, and then I'm gonna double check the torque spec. Torque setting is 47 newton meters, and again I'll do this in a crisscross pattern. not changing the wheel bearing on this wheel because uh, this one was done only a year ago going to hold that front bearing in as I go in here. First nut goes on, so that's the adjuster nut. 54mm hub nut socket. And I'll need to torque that to 59 newton meters. And spin it several times, both directions. I'm going to back it off until it's finger tight. Talk that back up to 59 again. Spin it again making sure that that bearing is seated well. Loosen that back off again. And then we're gonna torque that to 5.4. Okay, that's 5.4. We've got our locking washer. And that's got a little notch in the top there that sits into the top of the spindle. 
and then we put our locking nut which is the same as the adjusting nut over the top and we're going to do that one to 88 newton meters there we go I'll just check that again spinning nicely no play in it give that disc another wipe it's a bit grubby because the cruiser hasn't been getting used a lot lately all right now we just got to find uh, where these locking tabs are sitting on the right angle all right so we're gonna knock in this locking tab to lock the inner adjustment and we're going to bend this one out so we have one in and one out and put the hub back on put our gasket on there, new gasket, and then the hub. It's almost like that does not fit. I got to this stage and putting on the, the freewheeling hub and the uh, CV just seemed to be jammed to the top of the uh, to the spindle and I couldn't actually move it by hand there uh, and, and the, uh, the hub just wouldn't quite sit on there so I ended up deciding to pull it all back off again and uh, I don't know why it just didn't want to sit in position so let's have another go now here we go so that's perfect now so I don't know whether the CV just wasn't quite in position properly um, but I'm glad that I did take it all back apart because had I have not if I had have tried to force that on who knows what damage I would have been doing so there's there's a tip for a new player like myself if it doesn't work don't try to force it there's obviously a reason why it uh, wasn't meshing properly so pulled the whole assembly back apart back to the CV um, so sort of removed it just slightly pushed it back in again twist it all moving fine then so onwards we go but yeah that was a bit interesting so now we've got our hub on there we'll put our um, cone washers back in have our flat washers over the comb washers and nuts always in a star pattern without anything like this tightening them up the torque setting for this is going to be 31 newton meters Now, we need our circlip. So you need to make sure that that gasket surface is clean. I think I'm making it dirtier as I go. I'm 
this will only it needs to be in the freewheeling position which it is and it will only fit one way and I've just gotten lucky and got it the right way first time I'm told that these particular bolts will thread or just chew out very easily so you definitely don't want to be over torquing them the torque spec is 10 newton meters And that's the CV replaced. Wasn't too bad, a little bit fiddly, certainly time consuming on the uh, cleanup, but not too bad, not too difficult. Um, following the Toyota workshop manual and watching a couple of videos online, I'll get the wheel back on and call it job done. Hang on, hang on. I'm forgetting the brake caliper. Better not forget that. Torque those up to the correct spec and then we can call the job done. 103 newton meters is the torque spec for the caliper. There we go, all done. Caliper is back on, so we'll just put the wheel back on and we'll call the job done. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you've learned something out of it. I know I certainly have. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave us a comment. Tell us how I did if you're a bit more experienced at this sort of thing than me. How did I go? And we'll see you out on the tracks, hopefully in the next video out in the high country. See you then.